you know, black history is not made just off these people themselves. Everybody that is notable in black history have a group of people behind them in some way, shape or form. I can't really think of a person that had absolutely no black community behind them that was for them in order for them to, to come out in the forefront. And there are gonna be many unsung people in, in the black community, whether it's just the mother or grandmother of the community that just give ice cream to children. It may not be to the extent that Harriet Tubman have done. It may not have been the extent that Martin Luther King have done, but there are people that have made an impact in our lives with the smallest things, just watching out for the children in the community giving lessons of wisdom, even us as teachers, which is which is honorable profession, when we have children, when we teach them respect, when they do something to offend us, but that's also a learning opportunity to correct immoral behavior. Great, yes. All of us that are people of color, when we're being role models, when we're being role models for these children, we are pushing forward the vision of black history. We are coming against those stereotypes about us being lazy, shiftless, and things like that. And I think the main thing that has to happen with us, we gotta stop believing the negative stuff about ourselves and we gotta stop saying that we don't work together. Thank you so much for agreeing to talk with me. A lot of people think that one, because some hasn't been mentioned in Black history or because someone does not say that they have made a great impact on Black history, that they are not a part of the history. But I think that we are all a part of history in our own way because we have touched the lives of others. And I want you to know that you've certainly touched my life in that I see you as a very strong woman. I realized that once I took a look at what you sent me, that I just know the tip of the iceberg. Well, I, I want to first say, you know, I appreciate being able to collaborate with you, to learn from you because even being around you, it teaches me how to be more refined as a woman. So I definitely learn from you. And even in how I look at things, I think it's a lot better from being around you. So I do appreciate having the opportunity to just meet you and, and to learn. And I'm always willing to learn. And I do value much of your input. And I do try to apply it in certain situations. Thank you, ma'am. I know you have your doctorate. I'm going to say kudos to you for that. Well, thank you. Because of the COVID-19 and everything that was going on, we had, I had hoped that we could celebrate with you. So today, even though I'm not celebrating with you, I want you to know that I am celebrating you today. I know that you're the first person, according to you, that have received a doctorate degree. When you were 13 years old, did you think that this would be something that you would accomplish? No, ma'am. I have not fathomed at 13 about getting a doctorate or being the first person in my family to get one. I've never had that at the back of my mind. Mm -hmm. I want to say when I was 17, that was when I had a classmate that told me about uh, educators being able to receive a doctorate. And I think that is where uh, that seed of knowledge was dropped upon me. This was your classmate? Mm-hmm. This is what I'm talking about. And I like the fact that you use the word seed of knowledge because she planted that seed. 
and we saw it. I got to see it grow and become a reality. It's amazing, amazing. So that just tells you about the difference that we can make in the lives of others. Now you also shared some information about an aunt of yours. That was this much special to you, even though you may not have known her very well because of the time you didn't spend with her. I could have known more about her, but in her final years of her life, I'm gonna say within the final decade of her life, that's when I have bonded with her the most and learned the most about her because I live in Columbia and she lived in New Jersey for many years before returning to her hometown, St. Stephen. So even when she returned to her hometown in South Carolina, there has been a lot of space of difference. I've met her uh, once or twice as a child, but in the smallest thing she did was reach out to me after I graduated from high school when I was 18. And from there, she opened up a way of communication, letting me know, you know, I'm your aunt. I want you to know I exist. You know, I want to congratulate you. I care. So with her doing that, when I was able to get my first vehicle of my own and, you know, venture out and travel, she was one place that I, I traveled to for the first time by myself because St. Stephen, I normally would go there with my parents and I just decided to go visit her. And it blessed her heart and it blessed mine to be able to meet each other. Okay, and that's Mrs. Vernell Hesse Davis. Yes, ma'am. That's the aunt you visited in the hospital with your father. Was that? Yes, ma'am. Okay, because you told me about her being this spooky kind of lady. And <laughs> <laughs> we are colleagues and we both teach at the same K-8 school in St. Matthew, South Carolina. I am content that I received my master's degree. I am elated that you have your doctorate degree. Now in the, in you have your doctorate degree, but you also have a nonprofit. And what's the name of your nonprofit? The name of my nonprofit organization is Kappa Epsilon Lambda, Royal Christian Sorority Incorporated. I began this nonprofit in 2014. And the reason why I felt that the, the community or communities need a nonprofit such as this one, um, it's for Christian women who wants to link up with other Christian women to celebrate Christ, to have fun. and. I know a lot of times when we go to church, you know, sometimes you just meet people only in the pews and that's all you know. You know, sometimes you don't have that opportunity to fellowship with other women besides the church walls. And so we're not necessarily learning or understanding our neighbors just by sitting in the pews, leaving and going home. So what my Christian sorority intends to address is women being there for one another as Christians. Us, you know, iron sharpening iron, coming together, showing that we can go out, go places, have a good time. It doesn't have to be a messy conversation about someone. We can continue to edify one another and do great things together. So if anyone wanted to be a part of this organization, what are the requirements? Well, you need to have a relationship with Christ. And mm -hmm. that, that being said, you know, you need to have received Christ. You need to be at least 18 years or older. You do not need to be a part of a secular sorority. We are our own sorority. We're unified with all of us being in the same sorority. And it's no disrespect to other sororities, but this is the sorority for women who do not have their own sorority, and that's what it's for. Okay. And it's also so that you won't feel like, because we don't know what's involved with other organizations, but we know our organization, you don't have to compromise your Christian principles in any way. We just ask that, you know, you're honest, straightforward, 
with your responses whenever you should anyone decides they want to join. So is there a website or somewhere that someone could contact you if they wanted to join this organization? The direct way to contact me can be on Facebook. Mm -hmm. You can go to our page, Kappa Epsilon Lambda, Royal Christian Sorority Incorporated, or you can send me a message at kappaq14 at gmail.com. Now, you, there's a lot of firsts on your list. You are the first person in the family to graduate as a valedictorian of, high, of your high school class. You're the first person in your family to become a certified teacher, the first person in the family to earn a doctorate, the first person in your family to own a nonprofit, and the second person in your family to earn both a bachelor's and a master's degree. I just want you to know that when, when I read that about you, you took a lot on your shoulders. I believe that as women in, in our communities, we take a lot on our shoulders. And that if someone were to, to look at you and not know this about you, you certainly do not step out as if your head is in the clouds and you are better than anyone else. Though you could wear your crown and wear it proudly because you certainly earned it. I have met a young lady and she was one of the first people, oh, I'll say the first person that I can remember to ever call me a queen. But I know that at some point that was something or a term that you associated with well, royalty. As a matter of fact, when I look at your flyer, you have it color covered in purple. Why is that so important to you? Because a lot of the issues going on with whether it's a woman or a man having low self-esteem, it's the way people look at themselves. And coming up, I have really um, went through a lot growing up and to be a little more transparent, my upbringing, because adults did not know better in our family concerning self-esteem and certain things you don't say to children. And you know, certain things you don't say to people. And unfortunately, as a child, when it's done, it's not so much you can say. And then when they say horrible things to you, you embrace it, you believe it and it plants seeds of fear, it plants seeds of doubt, it plants seeds of hurt, pain, resentment, maybe even unforgiveness at times. So when it comes down to embracing royalty, this is something, this is a concept I had to grow into. I had to learn. I had to gain a better mindset of who I am. And the problem that I've had came, coming up was that I was listening to what everybody else said about me. And I was believing what everyone else said about me. I was in situations where people in my family, very close to me, when they seen that I was struggling and was without, rather than trying to help, they criticized, they ridiculed, and I was still, if it was left up to them, in the same predicament. So. The beauty about my journey and why I had to come the route that I had to go is because college taught me how to embrace myself. It taught me to recognize who I am. It taught me to find out who I am. And so I, at this point in my life, I refuse to let somebody tell me who I am and I'm just going to be who I am. And even now I still have people that can't handle me at 100. And then some may even think that I think that I'm better than them. No, I'm not better than them. I'm better than what they treat me. So I'm mm -hmm. like to just embrace who I am, be who I am. My standard for myself is royalty and it's nothing less than that. And I'm and part of my organization is to reinforce that with women. Lots of times when 
people grow up being negatively impacted by others, they don't, they don't turn out the way you have. They seem to let that seed of negativity grow up in them. I know that you have Jesus Christ inside of you. I, I know that because of my dealings with you and my time spent with you. What would you say to a 13 year old who says, I've always been told I won't be anything. I know that I will always be this way just because you were able to overcome that type of environment. What would you say to them now at 13 to make an, a positive impact on their life? Because I know your aunt had a positive impact on your life. I know that you may have seen others that were able to overcome certain things. You had a classmate that planted a seed in you and that seed grew into a mighty woman of God, a wonderful teacher. And now today I can also say as a result of what I saw happen at school, a great presenter of what you give to your students. So what would you say to them because you're trying to make a difference in the lives of others and impact history as history has impacted you. I would say to that 13 year old that feels that she's not good enough, that she needs to stop listening to anybody that's telling her she's not good enough. And I would tell her, you decide you decide what you want to do with your life. You know what you can do. Don't let anybody tell you what you can't do. Don't let anybody tell you what you can do. Just do that thing you know you can do. Be her. And when they say that you're not, be the opposite of what they say, no matter what they say. And don't let anyone tell you that you're not good enough because in this life, you're always going to have your naysayers. You're always going to have somebody that's going to disagree with what you're doing. You could be doing the, the greatest thing out of your heart, but you will still have people that are against you. And it's not because you're doing wrong. It's because you're doing right. And in the words of Cicely Tyson, people wouldn't bother to beat on you if you was not a threat. So you keep on doing good, you keep on winning because that is how you're going to make the greatest impact and a lasting impact. And I have nothing else to say because that spoke volumes. This is the end of this interview. I'm a sister who loves this sister. I love you too. Influence on positive influence on this world.